Welcome to the MSI Creator Awards 2023, Imagination Makes Creator. Hey everyone, I'm Martin Lewin, and I'm glad to announce that I'll be this year's judge for the MSI Creator Awards, which starts on the 20th of April. The competition is hosted by MSI, a world leading PC brand, and is open for every creator worldwide to work this. There are three categories to choose from, graphic, animation, and film, the winners of each category will be rewarded with amazing prizes. I'll be the judge for animation. And this year's topic is Imagination Makes Creator. I'll share my artwork with you based on this theme as an inspiration for you to create yours. To me, this is a very open idea. I reimagined an old piece that I created years ago and I wanted to show the evolution of my workflow and idea. As creators, we always look back to our past to create our futures. And this is the idea that I want to show in my image. Bringing the space ape back to its original habitat, the jungle. There's nothing that stops you from creating your own imagination. I hope this triggers some ideas and I can't wait to see them. You can find the link to the official website and all the information that you need below in the description box. Good luck and here's the breakdown my image okay great so i'm going to show everything to you in three chapters this is the first one sculpt stage and zbrush uh in this stage i will explain how i sculpt the monkey or let's say the ape's head where i start from with a base mesh and then in the second chapter i try to explain like how i created the space suit and in the final chapter we go through the photoshop layers to show how everything is come together um in one final image so as you can see this head has a lot of details on it and uh, we use uh, very simple brushes like anybody can have these brushes standardly in their ZBrush package anything that I use externally is uh, custom alphas so what I did was I loaded up a base mesh of a monkey um, this is a very simple mesh there's no detail in there and I start with clay buildup brush uh, to add volume and also use a standard brush with a very very fine uh, 38 alpha so I can carve in more details so as you can see like those wrinkles are created with uh, the standard brush and the bigger volumes are created with um, the clay buildup and most of the times like I only use five brushes the clay buildup, the inflate, smooth, standard and that's roughly it the specialized brushes that I use are more towards let's say using uh, alphas and adding the fine micro details that I add in the end so as you can see like I'm just spinning my head around here and um, just using the clay buildup uh, and switch it out with a um, standard brush uh, to add all those creases and, and edges it's a very simple process the, the only thing that I would suggest is like if you do something like this and you sculpt for the first time make sure that you have enough reference like I've sculpted so many apes or monkeys in the past like for me it's it's entitled by numbers you know uh, I still use a lot of images but I never import images like I have a dual screen setup at home and what I do is like on one screen I load up the images as a reference and then like um, with figure drawing I use the one as reference and then I sculpt the details on my other screen so it's a very simple thing and it's a great way to, to study also you know like um, Instead of uh, redrawing real images that you bring into the software, like using your eyes to, to make sure that you are able to, to capture what you see on another screen. So I'm just stepped up a few subdivisions um, to add more detail. Like when I started, I started on low poly mesh and now it just went up a tiny bit. And um, the thing is like, um, you step up every subdivision until you feel that you can't add any more detail and then you refine everything so it's the same thing with this monkeys let's say the apes head like I cram in all the details that I can at a certain level and once I have the feeling that I can't add any more detail then I go upon subdivision so now even with the wrinkles like in first in the blocking out stage like I did big wrinkles um, but once I have the feeling that I can't add any more Sub, uh, 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 details to that certain subdivision then I subdivide everything and then I add more wrinkles to it um, and it's a very 
process, you know. Like I switch out those three, three brushes in this case, like the inflate standard and um, the clay buildup, just for my volumes. And if I have to make bigger adjustments to certain shapes, like I might use, let's say, a move brush or a move topology brush, depending on how high the subdivision is. And that's generally it, you know. Just blocking in the big shapes and refining them, tweaking them, getting them better. And then in the next stage, as you can see, like I will use um, alphas, those are black or white images, to let's say stencil the details in there. So those details, those images, uh, they're based out of black and whites. And the thing is that the whites will be indented or added as volumes. And depending on the complexity of those images, uh, you can add more detail. So actually I'm polishing it up. Any more volume to it. And this whole process is, let's say, sped up uh, four times. Like, normally, like, this, I think the sculpt took me two and a half hours or something to, to, to complete, tweak, to refine. And eventually, like, once I'm happy with the general bigger shapes, like the stuff that I'm doing now, then I start refining and adding fine details. So now I'm, like, going up another step. Uh, I'm just using the standards and start dialing in the brush size. I start adding smaller and smaller creases over the whole monkey, like going back and forth and refining and retweaking the details. And like I do this for all the wrinkles, you know, 90% 90, 90 of the wrinkles that I add to any sculpture, like I sculpt them by hand. And then when I want to add like micro detailing, like the pores and, and real small stuff, then I use the alphas. So now also like around the eyes, use a standard brush with a fine edge. And I also use, let's say the, the inflate brush to add little volumes in between those wrinkles and to add those little volumes that make the, those details pop. And eventually it's like when I add all the details on the whole thing and I work on a piece with subdivisions, I might use a plugin, it's called M Detail. And the great thing about that again is that it will amplify all the details that I've sculpted and then it makes everything like pop twice as hard than actually the work that I put into it. That's something that you will see in a later stage. It will be very clear when you see it happen. So the same thing here like using the move brush. Trying to figure out all the proportions a tiny bit better. Bam up blouse. Using the finer tip to add those nice creases, those extra little wrinkles into it. And now I'm just switching out to the displacement brush and I'm stenciling in, in all the pores. As you can see, like it goes very fast when you work like this. And what I first do is like, I use a general alpha to add details everywhere. And then I start refining and retweaking everything so everything doesn't feel say generated from the same alpha so then I go like back and forth and switch out between big alphas small alphas and sometimes also like jump in, in between subdivisions because I want to have some let's say subsurfacing uh, um, dents that are happening that makes the whole thing come to life so and this like the general order that I sculpt most of the times like or I sculpt with subdivisions like this and start adding, refining, and retweeting the details. Or I might start, start with, let's say, a sphere, and then I use Sculptors Pro. That's a great way for sketching. And then you're actually, let's say, working with clay because then you can drag out volumes and you can go crazy with, with all dimensions and everything. Um, so. And also, like as you can see, like I also shut down uh, the symmetry in this stage completely because I want to keep it more natural and when you look at let's say faces or, or whatever like symmetry is always broken somewhere in the face especially with the detailing so also like towards the center of, of an object or let's say a face like I always turn off symmetry um, to make sure that um, uh, it all feels super natural like also like what it did now like on the vein that's a super nice trick like I went a few subdivisions down I use the inflate brush to draw in a vein and then I go up a few subdivisions and what happens then is that the vein is automatically blended in into the monkey's head. 
otherwise it's like very tricky to make it work that it feels as let's say subdermal in the whole completion um and and that's the thing like like when you're working on a piece like this like you just need to tweak it and refine it and get it better and better and better and then final stage also like like this is roughly also how the soup was created with some details um but um yeah i mean that's that's the my my personal let's say workflow like like going with the object turning it around using a lot of different alphas and start refining it and getting everything nice and tight in in the whole in the whole thing you know like this is roughly all the detail that the monkey's head has uh, as you can see like this is a turntable and there you can see let's say the completed thing where i added all the details all the small things and everything and this will be enough you know for the rendering um for some productions like you might need to go higher up in risk but this will work perfectly for where we're going at because it's like only a small section of the whole figure that we're creating and now in the next stage like you also see like a little comb that i made and kind of gives a preview to decide where the proportions will be and then in the next stage like i will create the actual suit like this is purely a guide for me to see where we're going with all the details and also like i threw it in key shot with some um, textures on it quickly uh, just to see how it would work also in a glass bubble and everything looks fine for me so then we can go on to the next stage and that will be the spacesuit. So now we're going to let's say the spacesuit chapter. And what you will see is like several steps that I took to design the whole thing. Uh, and to let's say use as a guide. So this was the first block out that I did on the whole piece. So I decided okay I want to have some, some shoulder pads on it. I want to have a air tank on his chest. And then I threw it in key shot. Just to see how it would work in the light you know. How his head would work in the volume of, um, of the dome that I would be adding later on. And it's like sketching, you know, like I start refining and tweaking everything. And I make certain decisions like how certain things would work in the design or not. Because I'm actually designing everything in 3D from the beginning. So nothing's, let's say, generated this 2D image. So I'm constantly, let's say, testing it backward uh, and forwards to, to the whole process. So what I did then was I took my base mesh into Marvel's Designer. And I kind of designed the suit, the fabric, and it's a simulation program. So the whole fabric was simulated around the body. And then I took this info back into ZBrush and I started adding more detail. So I started retweaking the shoulder pads. Uh, also on the shoulder, like I added a little uh, um, uh, flask. And I started playing with colors to see like where we're going in the design. And then it's like, okay, once I'm happy with the whole design of everything, then I start retweaking it and refining it and adding more details. And that's the thing, like, it's the same thing like we were, when we were sculpting the ZBrush. Like, I'm still sculpting a ZBrush, but I'm going back and forth um, to see where I'm going uh, to the final product. So I'm doing all these little these little tests in between, see if the suits is working, uh, what needs to be replaced visually for me. And then I start refining and adding more details. So now I'm adding lights in color to see like would it be interesting if there would be let's say lights into the glass dome. Also when I add shoes and gloves, how they would interact with everything. Uh, also the colors to check what would work and what wouldn't work visually for me. And like we're slowly going towards the end with this. Um, but it's a fun way, you know, like I'm processing all this, this information. And at a certain spot, like I say, okay, all the base shapes are good for me. And then I start adding details layer on layer on layer, uh, putting in rivets, putting in uh, extra straps, bolts, uh, little niches, everything, uh, small edges that could be damaged. Um, and, and this, let's say, what would be the, the final stage on the whole suit. So as you can see, like I added way more detail on this piece and also like uh, in the rendering, I tested out like how it would work, like the, the arm pad with little dials on it. Uh, also the wrists, like with the certain material, like like how it would reflect. Um, and uh, like once I'm happy, like I also make another turntable in ZBrush, purely grayscale, to figure out like if all the details are still working in there. So as you can see, like we added a ton of detail in the whole helmet. Uh, um, and, and all the rivets and everything and, and see how the lights work and I also do different tests with backgrounds like how it would look into a space environment or a cave or, or whatever because like I'm still developing this whole thing 
and this is like when we post the whole thing up so it's very simple like I posted it up in ZBrush uh, and then like the concept was coming together and the idea was that this ape is holding up let's say a guide beacon that shows him the way to his past and he uses of course like the MSI dragon hologram for this and also like they're all little tiny uh, um, MSI branding things happening in there uh, but as you can see like like this is the stage where I'm super happy at and and I'm also ready to send it to the final render image to get everything done and throw it into Photoshop and do the paint over and everything so this was also a final test to see how the lights would int interact from the hologram on the suit um, and, and figure out like, okay, maybe I need to tweak something. Maybe I need to make the sun lights brighter or not. And this also kind of defined like where I was going with, with the background because at first I was thinking about uh, an alien planet, but then like this kind of threw me towards the jungle environment. And then the whole thing came together visually for me um, because it's like looking at the hologram it could be like a skull of a monkey hologram looking for his ancestors, or he might look uh, for something else and then the hologram could switch out with the MSI logo and back and forth so as you can see like there's a lot of small things happening in there and I'm just seeing how the light reacts on his shoulders and on his arms and, and like I first was also thinking like, like putting him in a cave environment or some alien environment but, but it wasn't working for me so then I like say put the whole thing together and, and threw it into the jungle environment and then it made the whole thing click visually so here you also see like the build-up, like where we came from in the different steps towards the final pose. So I knew the textures would work, uh, the lighting would work, and then I just put it into a jungle environment. And what we first see is, let's say, a raw render, how I got it out of Keyshot. So this is the raw render. And as you can see, like it builds up layer by layer. Like I first added little scratches on it in Photoshop uh, with a different rendering layer. Then I added the butterfly. Um, I also added more environmental things like little lens flares that make it come to life and then I like smoke, more color, also added uh, plants in front of the figure to integrate it way more into the jungle um, just to make it all come to life you know um, to, to, to create this world that he's sitting in so also added little tweaks of lens flares and sparkles and what I finally did was, let's say, a big color correction, which is just some, like it shifted the whole color thing. And I also did a lens correction. And then we're practically done with the whole image, you know? Like it's a buildup of roughly uh, 20 layers or something. And the great thing in working with 3D is like you can show multiple angles um, from the same object. So that's always fun to play with. And this one last view of the master image. I hope this inspires you. Um, as you can see, like it was a fast breakdown, but you kind of have an idea where I came from from the beginning until the end. 